beer together. Shed blood together. And it is that knowledge that will bind us together forever. That and a love for this country that no bayonet can pierce, no bullet shatter. Rosalie's in camera mark and action. There's been a murder on the military base. And it's not just an average uh, homicide. It involves the general's daughter. Captain Campbell's death, occurring as it did on post, will cause a sensation. Military life is a whole civilization unto itself, with its own laws, and maintaining appearances is everything. This is a tragedy for the general. We don't want it to become one for the army. Yes, yes sir. As we unpeel the story, we start to find that there's this secret world where nobody's what they seem to be. Come up with anything yet? Just a preliminary list of suspects. Who? Oh, everyone. Did you work together on a daily basis? Absolutely. Did you uh, play together? What a truly excellent question. I love the notion of a murder mystery that took place in this environment, and it was not just a who done it, but sort of why they done it. John Travolta stars in the psychological murder mystery, The General's Daughter, from Con Air director Simon West. The film co-stars Madeline Stowe, James Woods, Timothy Hutton, James Cromwell, Leslie Stephenson, and Clarence Williams III. The story is based on Nelson DeMille's best-selling novel. The thing that mostly attracted me to the material was the story. It stuck with me. I was interested in it because I didn't know what was going to happen next. I think secondly, I discovered what I could do with the character. You're going to have to decide on this one, Paul. Are you a soldier or a policeman? I'm a soldier, sir. Travolta plays a top detective for the Army's Elite Criminal Investigation Division. Basically, they're cops, but they're in the Army, and so there's uh, very different rules to both being a policeman and being a soldier. For one thing, they don't have to wear uniforms, they don't have to have military haircuts. The people they arrest, they don't have a right to an attorney, they don't have the right to remain silent. So John Travolta is this perfect kind of rogue soldier. You can't search her off post house without getting a civilian search warrant. The story starts with him undercover, playing a completely different role. Sergeant White here. It's Colonel Ken Brenner, so you can drop the cheesy southern accent. The only thing keep me alive is that cheesy southern accent. He can, you know, put on a funny accent and dress differently and walk differently, so I just wanted to make the most out of John's multi-talent. What have we got here? Torture, raped, and murder. It was the thriller aspect of this story that appealed to producer Mace Neufeld, whose other credits include Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger. There's been an apparent rape and murder on a military base in the South. The victim was a female army captain who is the daughter of the commanding general on the base. She's a West Point graduate, kind of an army poster girl. The general is about to retire and run for vice president. And John Travolta is called in and told to wrap up the case as quickly as possible. After 36 hours, the FBI will send in a task force to investigate. The intention is to finish up the investigation before this event has got to be relegated to outside authorities, namely the FBI, which will then open it up to the press, the media, which is something that he does not want to have happen. Just find the son of a bitch. We'll find the son of a bitch, sir. Parker. The film was shot at various locations in and around Savannah, Georgia, from historic plantations to remote swamplands. Well, I decided to set the story very firmly in the, in the Deep South because I wanted old architecture, I wanted that oppressive heat, I wanted the, the dark, shadowy past of the South. So I, I kind of refer to it as sort of Southern Gothic look. The look of Savannah and all those old houses and the plantations that doubled as this part of military apparatus was just magnificent for what we're trying to do. Believe me, this has the feel, the sweat, the heat, the, you know, the mosquitoes, that simmering of intensity that comes in a southern military base. It's a fascinating town because as beautiful and as exquisite as the buildings are, there is a definite sense of something very decayed and decrepit and seedy happening. 
The film was shot during one of Savannah's hottest summers on record, which posed a number of practical challenges. The humidity is like 100% and uh, the temperature is always in the 90s and every afternoon a thunderstorm comes in and we have to run for cover so we don't get electrocuted and we even got hit by a tornado the other day. So uh, it's pretty interesting weather here. The producers mobilized a full spectrum of aircraft, ground vehicles and weapons to create a convincing backdrop. For certain cast members, the military aspects of the story rang true to their own experiences. Well, I not only grew up in the military, but I was actually nominated to the United States Air Force Academy. So I, I've been very familiar with the, the military environment, and I must say it's been captured amazingly well in this film. One set built specifically for the film was an elaborate combat training site. This is uh, what we call a mount site, which is a military operations urban terrain area where the army would train to fight in amongst buildings and cities, which is much more what warfare is like these days. The filmmakers incorporated state-of-the-art military devices into the training site. One of the things I try to do is take technologies from the military and place them in the film, something that we might not have seen in a film before. One such device is a remotely controlled robot used for surveillance, tactical maneuvers, and bomb disposal. This is the device that discovers the body of the general's daughter. Oh my God. When Travolta is brought onto the case, he is assigned a partner. Why is she here? A woman with whom he has a past. You also need records. Captain Campbell's personal and medical record, ASAP. Iron did that. Thank you. You're welcome. Suddenly a new partner is thrown upon him in the middle of this investigation. And he has two issues now. He's got to solve this murder and he's got to deal with his old feelings about this girlfriend. I think I can help you on this one, but I don't want it to be awkward. Awkward? Now why would you think it would be awkward? You're pouting. This is not pouting. They are slightly at odds with each other. It's a very male-female thing that's happening and it's sort of a source of humor in the movie. There's a really fun scene where they go at it in the bar in front of all these people. They have this huge argument. Maybe I wanted you not to accept my decision to break it off. Maybe I wanted you to take me away. Oh, we're talking about telepathy here, not communicate. You know, let's just uh, talk about this next week, okay? Fine. Just one more thing. Is this next week already? You get it? For Stowe, Travolta brought several aspects of his own personality to the role. He's very much the kind of man that women love being around, you know? There's a sense of strength and passion and a kind of bedevilment about him. I didn't realize you knew her. I didn't know her. I met her a couple of times. Uh -huh. What was she like? Are you asking this because you think I slept with her? Madeline Stowe is so beautiful and she's such a good actress. We just at once felt comfortable and caring toward each other. We had an innate or natural chemistry that I felt was unusual. Why was she murdered? Well, possible motives for murder are profit, revenge, jealousy, to conceal a crime, to avoid humiliation and disgrace, or plain old homicidal maintenance. In researching the original novel, author Nelson DeMille was fascinated by the difference between civilian and military investigations. The counterpoint between how the military acts and how the civilian world acts makes for fascinating drama. It looks the same, it looks like American justice, but really, deep down, it is army justice, and army justice is always concerned with good order and discipline. There are three ways of doing things. The right way, the wrong way, and the army way. From day one, you take an oath. You take an oath of allegiance to the country, but also to the military. And I think that idea of duty on a country is still very pervasive in the military. In this investigation, Travolta and Stowe uncover a number of suspects. Who? Oh. Everyone. Everyone, indirectly or directly, either knows the general's daughter or has been involved with her somehow. And so the air is precarious, to, to say the least. In a key scene, Travolta heads for the nerve center of activity at the base, the officers' club. I wanted a scene at the beginning of the movie to show the difference between John Travolta's character and the rest of the people that he was investigating. And I wanted to put him in this environment where the whole room is full of hundreds of of officers that were all of a higher rank than him and he likes to swagger into that room and show everybody that although I'm you know of a much lower rank than the rest of you I could arrest any one of you when I walk into this room with my partner you can just feel the weight of 
the suspicion of the almost finding out of things. And he knows intrinsically that he's got this effect on the whole room. So he's also kind of getting off on the idea that he's making these people this uncomfortable at this moment, but also hoping to find a clue by making them feel possibly uncomfortable. They seem to be not exactly welcome by the military because you're investigating your own kind and in a sense you almost have to theoretically break ranks to do this. Captain Bransford? Whoa. Yeah, that would be me. What can I do for you, honey? Better yet, what can you do for me? <laughs> well, dear, you can ask these other men to excuse us. Yes, that's a CID badge you're looking at. In addition to conflicts between the investigators and their suspects, this story also explores conflicts between the sexes in the military. When I was in the military, almost all female officers were nurses, and there were very few in the command position. And when I went to research this book, I found, you know, more and more women who are in command positions, and that's what this book and to a large extent the movie raises the question of, which is women in the military and how effective are they and how well are they being integrated. There's a lot of stuff if you were a woman in the army to, that you got to put up with and uh, a lot of people don't like that we're here. I was very interested in how women are supposed to fit in the military, whether they're you know resented or welcome. It's a great area for drama because there's so much sexual tension as well as authoritative tension that uh, that's where great stories are made. You guys don't get it. With Elizabeth gone, the general has got a clearer field to settle some scores. In this story, everyone on base has an agenda. There's careers on the line here, and so a lot of despicable decisions are made because individuals are thinking about career. Thank you, Brent. You can go now. Please, sir. I have done everything you've wanted. Everything! Now you indulge me! Get it? Director West brings his unique visual style to this project, from the intimate character scenes to the large-scale set pieces. Simon West has been incredible, just the way he's using the camera as an important part of the storytelling. You just get the sense around you, the way it's being filmed. It's being presented in a unique way. Simon has a tremendous visual sense and a real sense of scope and depth. Everything was perfectly choreographed. At one point, there were helicopters and bombs and 300 soldiers. It was pretty amazing. It's amazing that when you write a book, you can create this whole world with nothing more than a typewriter. But when you see it being shot, you realize that there are hundreds and hundreds of people involved. And it's a uh, major production, to say the least. Marker. And action. At one point, Travolta himself becomes the target of an attack. John's character has gotten to the top of the houseboat, and the bad guy is underneath, firing bullets into the roof, tracking John across the roof and into the water. Hello, oh, my couch. Basically, what we're doing here tonight is we're setting up Travolta's character coming off the top of the houseboat with some squibs following him behind. There's the intangibles of, of just having to work around, you know, different obstacles that are here. And uh, actually, I've been hearing a lot from people around here in Savannah that there's water moccasins, I've heard there's alligators. I mean, everything and anything, you know. Very still on the dock, everybody. The special effects crew utilized a new filmmaking weapon. Special compressed air guns capable of shooting multiple rounds at high speed. Glass marbles are used as bullets. Here they are, picture. Once the actors were in the water, custom camera rigs were used to capture the action. I had a blast. It was fun swimming every day and, and shooting guns and having uh, all sorts of stunts and fights. I pop up the ground, he's there with a the gun. Like a big old kid, you know, the, the crew got to play, I got to play, the actors got to play. Investigation uncovers multiple clues leading in different directions. Who are these guys? I need a name. 
No. John's character is relentless. I mean, he just keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming. And he peels away all the layers of the onion to get to the heart of the matter. They, of course, keep asking questions and more and more doors get open and more and more things are found out. That's what the movie really becomes is this, this web, this tangled nest of very, very dark secrets that uh, have occurred on the space. Were you aware of Elizabeth Campbell's extracurricular activities? How do you mean? You know what I mean. Elizabeth Campbell is a woman who's complicated beyond, beyond imagination. What have we got here? She has a very, very wild side, which is very shocking, considering that on the outside, everything's perfect, everything's very neat, and then when you go in her basement and find this dungeon, it's very interesting. This is it. Good Lord. It's a room that is pretty much a sexual dungeon. Ten bucks says that these are not the Lost Honeymooners episode. The investigation turns into a cat and mouse chase in which no secrets are revealed. Liz was more or less my protege. At least I'd like to think she was. We were very close. James Woods, he's obviously the cleverest guy on the base, the smartest, most intelligent guy, apart from John's character, who, who does it in a different way. He's, he's just as smart, but he does it through the back door. He kind of pretends to be the dumb warrant officer, but actually he's just as clever as James Woods' character. And so when these two get together, the sparks fly. And so those scenes were great to watch because they're also two great actors going head to head. Wouldn't it behoove me to retain the services of an attorney? I know a good one. You're not a civilian colonel. You're in the army. You have no rights to an attorney. You have no right to remain silent. And if you don't cooperate, I may have to put you in jail. And that would make me feel bad. Certainly the James Wood scene was, was one of my favorite to do because of the quality of the writing. It's a terrific opportunity for two actors, and John is a just fabulous actor to work with in terms of playing all those levels that take place in the interrogations. And my evasiveness, of course, is something that's a wonderful thing for me to play. You see what you're doing here? Looking for answers? You're trying to make me like you. And you know what? It's working, I do. But now do you see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to make you like me, too. There are as many alibis as suspects. How about you? Home in bed when the tower called. Can your wife verify that? I love this kind of movie. I mean, it's just a great murder mystery. And just when you think one thing might have happened or one person might have been responsible for the killing, suddenly that path leads to another path and it's somebody else. And this script is so beautifully written. And the way Simon West is directing it, it's going to be great. You can watch it on many levels and just sit back and have fun and, and enjoy everybody um, you know, trying to get one up on each other. But also if you start to get into it and think about it, it's actually a very detailed and classic drama. Why were you so stupid as to leave your fingerprints everywhere? No matter what you think you know about the character, it'll be the opposite. There are a series of suspects and we're gonna find out you know, what happened. And it's not just about rape and murder, believe it or not. And I actually have a wonderful sequence with John where he says, well, what is this about? Is it about drugs? No. Is it about cheating at the point? No. Is it about rape? Worse. What's worse than rape? When you find that out, then you'll know everything, won't you? With the clock ticking, Travolta must piece together the clues that will provide the ultimate solution to the case. I think what you're going to find is a very entertaining, thrilling, and mysterious picture. I think that it makes a lot of left turns that are unexpected. I think it is original, which is hard to do in this kind of genre. He's got his hands full and he's got a time limit, 36 hours, to figure out this case. You better start thinking about your career. You better start thinking about yours.